Well, hi, uh, my name is Lutka, and uh, today we have the first meeting of Tourist Academy. We have developed a series of uh, webinars with uh, special topics, which will cover basics and advanced topics like Today we have we are starting with basics from Tourist Omnia. We will discuss uh, the unboxing and uh, setup. Next time we will continue with others. We will share the details in the end. You can ask questions uh, after the presentation of Mr. Michal Rushetsky or write them in Slido. The link for Slido will be shared in uh, the chat. Well, so I think that we can start. Michal, it's your turn. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, as Litka said, uh, we are just starting with this series. So uh, we decided to start slowly and with something that uh, is not that interesting to our existing user base, but uh, really interesting for everybody who doesn't have tourists yet. So I will post a link to the Slido and uh, on Slido, we also have a poll where we ask you to let us know what uh, tourists do you have, if you have any. So we know who's our audience. And uh, as Litka said, we will just uh, go to the first setup of uh, Tourist Omnia to show you how it looks like if you don't have any experience with tourist routers yet. And then we have we will have some time to discuss and uh, answer questions and talk about what you are interested in and uh, about feedback of this session, so we can uh, shape the future sessions based on that. So, uh, in the chat, you have already link to the Slido with a running poll. Please let us know what uh, router do you have. And uh, I will ask uh, them to start the first video. Let's take a look at Tourist Omnia 2020. We will try to open up the box. I'll start by sliding out the cover. Now we need to cut duct tape, open up the carton box, and now what's inside? We can see two compartments. In the left one is Twist Omnia. You can see you can see multiple LAN ports, one port and SFP port for fiber, USB 3 port. On the other side, plenty of LEDs and again USB 3 port and brightness button. On the rear side, there are also antenna connectors and uh, reset button. Let's put it back and take a look what's else there. In the second compartment, we have a manual, Ethernet cable, power adapter, with uh, multiple cords, US one, EU one, and UK one. We also have three antennas. And uh, wall mount with alternative screws. So how to set it up? First, I will screw on the antennas. Okay. 
Then uh, I will use cable from my internet provider and put it into one port. The blue cable I will use to connect to my PC, so I will put it into one of the LAN ports. The other part I will connect later on to a PC. And what's left is to plug in the power cord. LEDs will blink, so we'll, you will see that it's connected to the power, and the Twist Omnia will start booting. Once up, all the LEDs will blink green. And we are ready. So this was the first part. Uh, you have seen uh, what's inside the box, uh, how to set up uh, the Twist Omnia hardware wise. And uh, in the next video, you will see how to set it up afterwards. So in the first video, we connected all the hardware. We connected it uh, to the internet and uh, to our PC. And now we will go to the software setup. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I took a look at Slido. We have a uh, few people that uh, don't have Omnia yet. So I hope that uh, this will be very useful for them to know what it is about and how it, how it looks like and what to expect. And uh, apart from uh, running poll, you can also click on the uh, Q&A section and prepare some, uh, some of your questions that we will answer after the second video. Let's take a look at first setup of Twist Omnia. After connecting all the cables, you need to access the first run wizard. You can do so by typing address in your web browser, http twist.local. If this doesn't work for you, you might have some issue with resolving uh, local addresses. In that case, use IP address directly. You will end up on the same page. First step is setting up your password. Pick something that is not easy to guess. And you can select whether you want to use it just for the voice user interface or if you want to access your router later on via SSH or Lucy, which is OpenWRT web interface. That's what this uh, option do. I can select to use the same password that I entered just above for all the advanced setup, or I can pick a different password. I will use the same one. And we can proceed to the next step. Save everything and go to the next step. In the next step, you can choose what workflow you want to follow. Basically, what you are choosing now is uh, what you want to set up in the first run wizard. You can choose router, local server, or minimal setup. The difference is how many steps you will be presented with and some of the defaults that will show on them. Router is the most complex setup, so we will go with that. And follow to the next step. In Network Interfaces page, you can see which ports are occupied, like uh, in my case, one port and LAN3 port. And you can also assign them between the zones. In case of Twist Omnia, it doesn't make much sense to change it in the default. But uh, for more complex systems like Twist Mox, you might want to switch uh, what is your WAN and what, what is your LAN. 
you can do that also uh, anytime later. For now, let's just save everything and continue. In this step, we set up our internet connection. DHCP will work for most of us, but uh, in case your ISP provides you with more complex setup, you can switch to static uh, configuration or PPPoE, or you can for IPv6 uh, use uh, 624 or 6 in 4 as well. After selecting the correct protocols, we just uh, save the configuration and uh, wait for a network to restart and get back online. Now we can try connection test down here. Everything works, so we can follow to the next step. Here you can select country you are living in. Uh, why is it important is because some of the settings involve local time and also this influence uh, your regulatory domain for Wi-Fi. I live in Prague, so I don't have to change anything. I just save and continue to the next step. Next step is DNS settings. By default, we are using whatever your ISP provided as DNS resolvers. Tricky part is that some of the ISPs are breaking DNS sec resolving. Because of that, we have a few options here. You can either disable for writing and do all the resolving directly on your Twist Omnia router, or you can pick one of the open resolvers, for example, CZNIC ones. Once we save the settings, we again have a connection test and we can check whether it works or not. DNSSEC test takes a little bit longer than uh, just DNS one. Everything works, so we can continue to the next step. Next step is updater. We use automatic updates by default. That means that uh, your router will automatically download the latest updates and install it without you having to care about it. If you want to have more control over it, there is much better choice than just turning it off, which we highly unrecommend. Uh, you can use delayed updates this way it will install automatically after one day unless you explicitly approve it before that deadline or you can require every update to be manually approved. We recommend either automatic updates to have everything uh, automatically right away or at least the delayed updates so you wouldn't forget to install any security updates. You can also choose uh, what languages do you speak and uh, install them. Let's stick with automatic updates for now and save the settings and follow to the next step. This is the last step. After it, you are in a configuration interface that looks exactly like the first run wizard and you can change anything that you haven't changed yet. As you can see, I have a notification that I need to reboot the device due to recent updates. I can uh, change various settings. Uh, the most interesting one I would say is maintenance at the beginning. You want to enable notifications so you get email whenever something interesting happens on your router. You can choose the verbosity of the notifications. And also, as I have a notification that I need to reboot my router, I can select uh, when it will reboot automatically. And here I can select the time 
That time depends on the time zone as we selected in region settings. That is why it is important to select the correct time zone. So it will be your 3 a.m. in the morning and not somebody else's around the globe. Apart from that, you can access all the settings that we did during the first run Vizar. And they look exactly the same as they looked in the wizard, like network interfaces, one configuration. One more interesting setting that we didn't cover in the first time wizard is uh, Wi-Fi. You can enable it here and password and also enable guest Wi-Fi with different password. Guest Wi-Fi can be further configured in uh, guest network settings where you can also limit the speed of the guest network. So people using your guest network wouldn't eat up all your bandwidth. That's all for initial settings. Uh, we can look into other functionality later on in more details. Welcome back. We have finished the first part uh, of our webinar. Now it's time for your questions. Uh, here are two ways how to ask. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, you can uh, write your questions in Slido. As I see, we have uh, a few of them there. So Michal will prepare the answers now. And uh, for you who are uh, watching us uh, in Zoom, you can uh, ask the questions personally. Just click on the hand button and we will allow you to present your question. First question that we, hear, we have here is uh, in Czech, so I will translate it. Uh, it's about uh, whether we uh, are planning to do some successor for Tris Omnia or alternatively some other device that will have more RAM. We are thinking about a successor for Tris Omnia. It's uh, kind of tricky because Tris Omnia was uh, really powerful and uh, it's uh, hard to figure out uh, how to top it. But uh, we are working on something. Uh, currently, we are in designing stage, so uh, all the aspects are really uh, fluid right now. So I cannot confirm whether it will have more RAM than uh, Omnia, but uh, it wouldn't have less for sure. So we are planning to do have a Twist Omnia successor. Uh, I cannot confirm and I don't know yet whether it will have more RAM or not. So if your ISP provides only DSL, can you use uh, Twiz Omnia? You can, but unfortunately, Twiz uh, routers uh, doesn't support the DSL directly. So you would need to have uh, some uh, converter from DSL to Ethernet, or there are some uh, DSL modules for SFP cage. But unfortunately, we don't have a universal solution that will work for everybody. We tried the SFP modules uh, ourselves and it worked on some networks quite well, but it didn't work on others. So we cannot uh, recommend it uh, generally. Uh, but uh, you can take a look at our forum, forum.tris.cz, where you can find uh, various people uh, trying to uh, Various uh, devices, and uh, if you search for DSL and SFP, you will find uh, some people that uh, got something working, and they will probably mention uh, the ISP that they are using. So, if you are lucky enough to have the same ISP, it will probably work for you as well. Otherwise, uh, use uh, some other device to convert DSL to Ethernet. Twist Omnia supports PPPoE, so you can dial 
in but uh, you just need to convert uh, DSL to Ethernet. Uh, what there are some other languages in first run wizard? Well, uh, our first run wizard uh, supports multiple languages, but uh, the image that is uh, flashed on our routers currently contains only three languages that, that is English, Czech, and German. Uh, in theory, you could prepare your own image and flash it, but that's probably not something that you would do at the, when you firstly buy the router. So, but uh, it's interesting question. We might uh, create uh, alternative firmwares for the future with uh, as much languages as possible and offer it as an, as an option. Uh, one of the advantages that Twiz routers have is uh, that uh, it's very easy to flash different firmware. You just download the tarball, put it on flash drive, plug in the flash drive and press the reset button for specified period of time. And it will reflash itself with up-to-date firmware. And uh, the up-to-date firmware can contain additional functionality, for example, additional languages. It sounds like an interesting feature proposal and uh, yeah, we will think about it. Thank you. And uh, how to set up a London time in region settings. Uh, it should be, uh, it should be pretty easy uh, when you go to location and region as we saw in the first plan wizard. Unfortunately, uh, I cannot show you right now. I'm connected to my internet via Twist Omnia, but uh, unfortunately, as I'm also participating in development, I'm, I was uh, testing something earlier today and I currently broke my web interface completely. So I'm, I'm in, in the middle of something, so I cannot access uh, my wrote this configuration interface as of now. So I cannot show you right now, but uh, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, yes, uh, this question is a really good one. Someone was really paying the attention. Uh, yeah, uh, two Omnia routers come with two Wi-Fi cards and those uh, in the Wi-Fi settings, you should have uh, two boxes. When I was shooting the video, I had a uh, testing Omnia that had only one Wi-Fi card, therefore there was only one card. But uh, whenever you buy to this Omnia in retail, you will have two Wi-Fi cards and you will be able to select whether you want to have, uh, you will be able to select uh, different settings for 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi cards. And the last question is actually not a question, but the answer to the question that we had previously, uh, it's uh, about the uh, example external device that can be used for DSL. And that is uh, somebody is recommending uh, Zyxo VMG 4005-B. And it is actually provided by uh, check uh, DSL operator set in for some of their customers. Uh, let's take a look in the meantime, also on the results of uh, our poll. As you can see, uh, most of the answers have uh, Twist Omnia, but there are some uh, people that uh, don't have Twist Router yet. So, uh, unless there are more questions, uh, you can still ask them. Uh, what we plan for the next session is uh, that we will take a look at uh, how easy it is in uh, Twist routers to configure OpenVPN and both uh, server and client.
uh, we will be looking at a new reference user interface. What you saw right now is the interface that you will have as of now on every tourist router that you buy. But uh, what we are working on right now is a new release of tourist OS 5.2, where we will be switching the default uh, user interface to the new one called the referees. Uh, it will change a little bit uh, from a graphical point of view. And it also has uh, some new functionality as well. Uh, it wouldn't change the wizard uh, because uh, unless you refresh it, but uh, in the future, we will uh, update the image that we are providing by default. So if you buy a tourist Omnia router a year from now, it will the wizard will look a little bit different and it will come with the refresh by default. But as of now, what you saw on the video is what you will get. And uh, we have another question. What is this uh, 1.x? Uh, great question. Yeah, uh, Tourist 1.x uh, was actually how we started with uh, tourist routers. In general, uh, we are from a company called uh, CZNIC, which is an association of companies, and we are check uh, DNS registry. And uh, how we started making routers is actually a nice, uh, nice story. Um, apart from uh, taking care of uh, .cz. We are also running uh, Czech national CSERT team, which is basically a, a security team that is uh, coordinating various uh, cybersecurity issues. Uh, I don't know much in detail about what they do, but they are very clever guys. And uh, yeah, they are pointing about uh, security threats everywhere. So uh, we were looking into how to uh, research and uh, figure out uh, whether the attacks on the internet are targeting uh, mainly just the servers or whether the average home users are at risk as well. So we were looking for a way to get some probe into uh, to the average home users, so we can monitor whether somebody is attacking them. So we were looking for some hardware devices, and at the time we haven't found anything really suitable. So we created a device called Tourist, which was uh, powerful enough and uh, open enough to allow us to develop our own firmware. Uh, deploy all the security probes that we wanted. And uh, as we were developing the hardware, we wanted to provide, uh, to make that hardware interesting for people. So we made it as a router and uh, we gave it away in Czech Republic for free to people interested in our research program. And those people actually helped us to collect uh, first information about uh, security at uh, home networks. And uh, our colleagues uh, started uh, going around the world and publishing the results about uh, the security research that they were doing with the data collected by those routers. And uh, they were always, by the way, mentioning how they got the data and describing the device. And uh, we got uh, feedback that uh, the research that they are doing is really interesting, but we also got uh, uh, quite some feedback about the device itself because it was open, it was powerful, and it was really versatile. So uh, people were asking whether they can buy it and how can they join. And uh, because it was uh, security research and it was financed uh, by us, we didn't really thought that it would be uh, right to just give it away and start um, start uh, producing it commercially. 
So, but we got uh, plenty of feedback that people are interested. So that's how we started with uh, Tourist Omnia. We created a Kickstarter uh, Indiegogo campaign and uh, we basically were asking whether people are really interested in open source uh, powerful router that they can buy and own and uh, inspect and uh, trust. And uh, we got an uh, overwhelming uh, response. And uh, that's how we started uh, making Twist Omnia routers. So Twist 1.x is an uh, old router that was never available outside of Czech Republic. But uh, that's how everything started. I can uh, share the uh, picture. It's uh, actually written down in our documentation. This is uh, the really first revision. It was blue. And this is uh, the upgraded revision that uh, had, uh, for example, already USB 3 port. So that's the that's how this project actually started. So are there any more questions? Will you start shipping Omnia with Wi-Fi 6 modules by default? We are uh, currently still looking into Wi-Fi 6 options. We found some cards that are compatible, at least on hardware side but uh, at the moment they are either really pricey or doesn't work from software point of view so at the moment uh, we have no option how to switch but uh, but uh, in the future uh, we will definitely switch to Wi-Fi 6, but uh, I can't say right now when and whether it will affect uh, current Omnia or if it will be in Tourist Omnia 2. But even if uh, Tourist Omnia, even if you bought Tourist Omnia right now with uh, AC cards, those cards are mini in mini PCI Express slots. So those are replaceable. So whenever in future we found uh, we find a card that works from software point of view, you can uh, replace it later on and buy a new card. And uh, another question that uh, popped up is uh, uh, whether there is some uh, support. Uh, we have official support, uh, mostly used for. RMAs that you can find on our website. Apart from that, uh, you can go to forum.tourist.cz where, use, where our users uh, chat to each other and help each other with uh, their issues. And it's also a place where you can find a uh, lot of uh, crazy ideas and their implementation. As I said, uh, our tourist routers are open and pretty versatile. So there's plenty of people using them to do really interesting stuff. So if you have some crazy idea and you are not sure whether it is achievable, uh, try uh, going to our forum and maybe somebody already did it. So. It's a nice way to end uh, the session. Thank you for your attention and have a nice uh, evening. Bye.